Hey everyone, it's Justin from Oshi and today I wanted to show you uh, a little video of uh, a few hands, a few situations uh, in the game, you know, and explain them and I also show you how to set up the game, right? Um, you know, Chris Kenny and I and some other friends of our game group were planning on doing a little uh, video of a whole game, you know, like playing through a whole game and showing you how it works. But unfortunately, we're still staying home, so for now, you know, I've, I've figured I'll make a video by myself uh, and just explain a little bit more about the game. And, you know, if you still have any questions about the rulebook or if something's unclear, let us know, you know, t comment in the rulebook directly, right? Or you can always message us on, on social media or, you know, you can comment below on this video and we'll always, you know, try to get back to you as soon as possible. So, uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right, guys, let's get started. And uh, so, first of all, you're gonna find your your wolf card twelve. Huh? Where is it? Right here. And put it aside, right? Wolf twelve, right up there. <laughs> and with a t like blue teal color right now. Um, there are four different uh, archetypes in this game. There are uh, three different sheep, right? The business, army, and kitchen sheep. And then there are the wolf uh, cards, which are basically wild cards because they beat any archetype. Um, and the 12 is the highest number. So, you know, it's almost like, uh, it's gonna be kind of like a price card for you at the bottom of your drawing deck. So, you know, once you put it aside, you shuffle, you're gonna distribute the cards for each player, right? Everyone gets six. So you're gonna do that. Three, three, three four, four, four. Five, 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 six, 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 six. There we go. And then you put your deck on top. And there you go. You're, you're ready to go. All right, now that we distributed all the cards for the players, uh, we can almost start the game. Uh, all we got to do is set who's going to go first and then also set which direction we're going to play in counterclockwise uh, counter or clockwise and uh, up to you of course right and um, you know for the sake of the video I'm going to pretend that my best friends Kenny, Chris and Brendan are going to sit here and play the game with me and you guys mind if I go first? No? Okay cool I'm going to go first <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go uh, counterclockwise I'm going to attack Kenny well, let's take a look at my hand. Um, you know, I have a decent hand. I have uh, four different archetypes here. I have uh, wolf cards, business sheep, uh, army sheep, and uh, kitchen sheep. And uh, so we start off the turn with uh, starting the combat. Uh, so I'm going to start the combat by attacking Kenny uh, with a card. So I'm going to put down and any card is fine. You can put any card that you like down. So it's there's no extra rules for that. Any card can be used for attacking. So I'm going to put down the three uh, business sheep card and attack Kenny with it. Now I actually do have another three, which is the army sheep three, and I could also put these down together, right, and attack Kenny with two cards. However, um, I kind of, I feel like, you know, I'm just going to attack him with one because I want to be nice and also because I want to show you guys a little bit more about mechanics in this game. So, now let's get to Kenny, right? Uh, look at his hand. Like, let me help you here, Kenny, <laughs> and take a look. So, he has a pretty okay hand as well. He has all the sheep, but no wolves, which is okay, you know, you can still not lose. Um, but he has a lot of business sheep here, which he can use to defend, right? As a defending player, you want to look at the, uh, the, the, the colors and the archetype of uh, your sheep, of your cards. I'm sorry. Um, so he would, he would use green business sheep. And let's say he would defend with a, f a four, right? A four of the business sheep. And just put the cart on top and now he defended this attack successfully now Chris could actually add to the attack because he's sitting next to Kenny you know adjacent players can attack so 
let's take a look at Chris. And the way he, the way Chris could attack is by matching any numbers on the board right now uh, with the numbers in his hand, right? So, um, as an attacker, you want to look at the numbers and match the numbers. So, right now he has no three or no four, so he cannot attack. He would say like, I can't attack. Um, I, as you remember, still have a three. Now I can actually add the three and see if Kenny wants to defend it or if he can defend it or not, right? And he actually can. He has another, right? He has a military uh, army sheep here. So yellow, higher number, six, goes on top, defended successfully, right? Two attacks. Super, super good job, Kenny. You attack, uh, you defended successfully twice. Now I'm gonna be a little mean. I'm gonna put down another four that I have to match his four that he used to defend with. Now this could be a good play or not good play. Depends, right? This is a because this is a wolf card. You usually want to keep those wolf cards until the end of the game, kind of uh, just because they are powerful. Um, so, you know, but, you know, uh, but for, for the video's sake, I'm just going to attack with the fall right now and try and make Kenny pick up the cards, you know? So he actually has a one of a kitchen sheep, right? So any, any sheep number one cards can actually, um, defend against any wolf cards. So... Here we go, he just uses the one to defend, and wow, that's pretty good. So, yeah, so now here's the, the, the issue though. Um, I have two ones as well, and they're actually pretty good cards, so do I wanna use them? You know, do I wanna make Kenny pick up or not? Let's see, right? So, first of all, let's say I wouldn't use my uh, cards to attack him then he would defend this successfully. We put the cards away into the discard pile and then we draw cards until we have six again. Um, I get to draw first because I was the first attacker. Then it would be the second attacker, which would be Chris. But since he didn't attack, he already has six cards, he doesn't draw. Then it's defender Kenny. He gets to draw three and the turn is over. So now let's get back. Let's go back. Let's say I would have I would have put that one down, and I think Kenny wouldn't have been able to defend that card. So with that, if he can't defend it, then uh, that means he has to pick up all these cards. Okay, he puts back those three. Uh, actually, these three. <laughs> um, he would pick all these up, and then have you know, more than six now, right? And yeah, and that's, that's you know, and uh, he would forfeit his uh, right to attack actually on the next turn. <laughs> All right, so that was the playthrough of one turn and the most common scenarios that would happen uh, during a game. And uh, there's two more things that I wanted to explain or clarify for you, which would be uh, the amount of attacks that are allowed during a combat phase and then also a scenario that uh, definitely, I think, occurs at least once, uh, about once or twice in a game, sometimes not, but, you know, it's not as common, but it still does happen pretty, uh, fairly often. So, and that would be passing the combat phase to the next player, if you're the defending player. So, um, you know, so to show you again, you know, I would attack Kenny right next to me here again with a card. Uh, the six of sheep uh, of the military sheep, right? The army sheep, the sniper sheep, and uh, Kenny now has uh, actually uh, so two options that we know already, which is picking up the cards or starting to defend to try and successfully defend all the attacks, and then you know uh, start his turn on the uh, uh, start his turn to attack Chris. But um, there's a third option before he starts defending. And starting to defend means, of course, right, like putting a card down like this. Uh, that would be the aid of uh, army sheep here, putting it down and successfully uh, defending the first attack. That would be uh, 
first uh, the the start of him defending the the in the combat phase, right? So, but before he does that, he can actually check his hand and see if he has a six, a, a matching number to the attacking card, right? So in this case, six, and he does. He does have a six, and he can put it down next to my attack, and then shift the combat phase to Chris. So now Chris would be a, be uh, the defending player. He would be attacked. And remember, I'm not a, next to Chris, so I can't attack him anymore. It would be Kenny and then Brendan who would attack Chris, right? So, so now Chris also can pick up, defend, or if he has a six, and well, he does. <laughs> How did that happen, right? Um, for, well, if he does, he can even also pass the combat over to Brendan. Now, <clears throat> Brendan would have a six. He doesn't. <laughs> well, because I think I put it over here. Uh, yeah. So let's say he would have this one, right? He could actually pass the whole attack back to me. Now, for it to go all the way around, doesn't happen too often. Does happen sometimes, though. I mean, it happened uh, before when we played. But um, I think that's something really cool in this uh, in this in this game as well. That you know your attack can come all the way around and kind of like haunt you, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, so <clears throat> so you can definitely move the combat phase. I think that's a like again. I think it's a really cool mechanic. Uh, it's my probably one of my favorite mechanics in this game. And again, it can only happen before he before Kenny starts defending right if he started if you start uh, if he started defending like this he for example he put the eight down right and then for example Chris and I would put our eights and sixes down to keep attacking Kenny and then now he realizes you know what I can't defend against this um, I'm gonna match some numbers on here and pass the combat on uh, it doesn't work that way so he unfortunately can't anymore he decided to defend and once you start de uh, defending uh, your only options are either to pick up the cards or successfully defend the, uh, all the attacks that are allowed in that combat and then end the combat phase successfully. So now, uh, that, uh, so now let's talk about the maximum amount of attack. Or actually, let's talk about another uh, quick scenario and maybe a little strategy, which is, uh, for example, if I attack Kenny, and Chris, again, he had a six here too, and he feels like, oh, you know what? I wanna join into the attack before Kenny decides he might pick up this card, right? So Chris puts down the six before Kenny does anything. Kenny can still pass this six over to Chris. And then the combat phase, oh, actually, he can put down the six and pass the combat phase over to Chris, right? So. Chris would attack himself with his own card, you know? So that could happen, you know, but it's it's decision, right? Like, hey, do I wait for her Kenny to start defending? Maybe he will pick up and I lose the opportunity to add some more attacks, you know, some more cards, so that uh, Kenny has to pick up more. Um, you know, it's 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 a little strategy, uh, it's a little like snap decisions that you have to make here. Um, but yeah, why I'm also bringing up this, this scenario is because with, um, uh, it's a very com uh, it is a com it is a scenario that could occur and it would uh, reduce or adjust the, the the allowed attacks in a combat phase right so in general six attacks are allowed maximum in a combat phase so meaning um, we can put six cards down right and even though if Kenny defends an attack it doesn't mean that attack goes away and right away. And I can put another attack down uh, to add it to seven attacks. No, it's or well, seven cards on the board. No, six cards are allowed on the field as attacking, right? As maximum, and um, and uh, and then I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so six are allowed, and uh, even if Kenny defends against them, it's still six. And uh, in the late game phases uh, stages, um, there might be. Uh, less cards in Kenny's hand or in anyone's hand, in a player's hand, right? Because let's say the drawing pile is gone, we're in the late game and you know we already got rid of some cards so we're down to maybe four, right? Then only four attacks would be allowed 
against uh, against the defending player, right? If he has less than six cards in his hand at the start of the combat, uh, he uh, you know at the start of the combat phase, he, uh, he you can only attack him with uh, that many attacks. So um, for for Bre for Chris, for example, though in this in the scenario where he puts these down and uh, this slides over, it would mean he only has five cards in hand right now at the beginning of his combat right now because the combat shifted, right? It kind of ended for Kenny and shifted over to Chris. Then that means only five are allowed. So now Brendan or Chris, uh, Kenny could only add two more attacks to attack Chris. Um, yeah, I hope that makes sense, right? So, because uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's not like you can put all your cards down and then, you know, Chris gets to decide which ones he wants wants to defend so you also have to figure out like at some point at at the end you know what kind of archetype or sheep he has if he has a business sheep uh, you want to put down a kitchen sheep so for example so he can't defend and he has to pick up that card right so if you can only attack with one card you have to figure out which color uh, which archetype am I gonna use to attack him right which sheep um, so that has a little strategy at the end as well um, and a little luck of course you know I mean that's you know, it's a little guessing game, of course. Or if you paid attention and you realize and you remember what they picked up and what they used so far, you know, then you can kind of deduct what they uh, what they probably have in hand. So uh, it gets pretty fun, right? So there's a little uh, complexity to it. So you can, you know, for uh, a little experienced players, there's a little bit more strategy to it. But then, you know, it's it, I think it's also a very casual, uh, fun fun game for the casual player, right? Just to have fun and mess around with everyone like you know like I like to do all the time but uh, yeah so that's uh, all I wanted to talk about in this video today so I hope I made things clear for you uh, and explained you know certain situations and uh, uh, scenarios that happen in the game and um, you know I'm, I, I hope I made you guys uh, uh, I hope you feel more interested in trying out the game right or if you tried already uh, I hope this clears some things up uh, uh, yeah a few things up for you if if things were unclear, uh, let us know, right? Let, let me know in the comments, right? Write whatever suggestions and ideas you have. Um, you know, you can also comment directly into our rule book and uh, let us know what you think, right? Is it clear enough? Is it worded? Uh, is it worded clear if, you know, can you understand it when you just read it? Uh, we would love to know your feedback, right? And if you also have suggestions for the gameplay or ideas, let us know as well, right? We actually just got a new suggestion and I think it's a, it, it might be a really cool optional idea uh, rule which is uh, you know if you collect uh, three cards of a certain certain type you know and we were thinking maybe the wolf cards 9, 10, and 12, uh, 10, 11 and 12 because they are the strongest then you automatically win the game and everyone loses so um, sounds kind of fun uh, we still haven't test played it uh, we, we are definitely going to and uh, see how that kind of fits in if it happens too often or if it's if it's you know a little uh, little chance you know just a random chance for somebody just to like swoop uh, swoop in and win that game with a different win con um, you know you might uh, if, if you want to try it please do and let us know what you guys think about that suggestion right uh, and again if you have more let us know and uh, you know thanks for watching again thanks for watching our, uh, our videos and uh, following us and supporting us you know, we're really uh, we're, we're really happy that you guys do and we hope you guys continue to do so so again thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time um, see ya bye <laughs>